to our first speaker. Our first speaker is uh, Jean-Jacques Orban de Sivry. He's from the Carl Leuven, and um, he's a professor in the Motor Control and uh, Neuroplasticity Research Group. And he will talk about our age-related changes in internal model function linked to poor motor sensory function. So, uh, JJ, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Thank you all for coming or attending uh, the talk. So this uh, question here was motivated by the following Twitter poll that I put a few weeks ago online but that uh, asked about the link between somatosensory acuity and internal model recalibration. And 80% of the people who actually responded to this poll um, were convinced that there was a link, while this actually contradicted what we have found in the lab in two different studies that I'm gonna describe now. So in the first studies is about uh, the task curve and can feedback task, where people don't see the hand and they have to bring the hand from the starting position to the target here, the black circle. And they are told that the cursor that they show, that they see on the screen, Will be, is completely uncoupled from their uh, hand movement. And so the cursor will always go in this direction to the left, while the hand has to go to this target, even though they don't see the hand. And what happens is that with training, people start to drift away from the target. And this is represented here on this graph. So you have triangle number, and this is the hand angle. And you see that a group of young people here, on average, they drift around 15 degrees after 400 trials. But what was interesting to us is to see that when Kuhn ran this experiment in all the people, that this implicit adaptation, this drift of the hand, driven by the deviation of the cursor, was larger in older people than in young people. And so we were wondering whether this was actually linked to the fact that all the people could not localize the direction of the hand movement properly. And so it's sort of a sort of proprioceptive prediction error. And if you don't know where your hand goes, then of course you might be tempted to uh, let your hand drift further away. So Kuhn in his other, is his next experiment, tested this where people were asked to reach to a target and then the robot could deviate the hand in one of those directions that are represented with color lines. And people were asked to report whether they were on the left or on the right of these targets. And uh, we did that for many trials, perturbation on the left, on the right, and so on. And we were able to build psychometric curve and the slope of this psychometric curve gives us an idea of how accurately people can localize their hand direction with respect to the target. And when we do look at the slope for young in blue and old people in orange, we see that there was no difference in how accurately people could localize the hand and the confidence in this uh, hand direction detection task. And so that, that cannot, of course, then explain the large difference that we saw in implicit adaptation. We also tested other sort of somatosensory function tasks, for instance, a position matching task, where people, uh, where the robot moves one hand and you have to move your other hand, and there also there was no link. So no, that was one task. We had another task that's called the sensory attenuation task, where you received a force on your left hand, and then you, by pushing with your right hand on your left finger, you have to reproduce this force. And when people do that, for instance, they have to reproduce a force of two newton, and when they push themselves, they actually push 3.5 newtons. So they push more than they have to. And this is actually not because they can't feel the force, because when they, reproduce the force indirectly, they actually do that properly. And this is those to arise from this model where proprioception is in a Bayesian way uh, merged with a uh, prediction from the internal model. And that gives us the, this uh, overcompensation. Import. And of course, the idea is that if you would then have worse proprioception, you would rely more on the prediction and you would have even more uh, overcompensation. And so this is what my student Manasa tested recently, but with the arm rather than with the fingers. So here the subject first received a force in his left, on his left arm. Then he has to reproduce this force with, by moving a slider with his right arm, for instance. And so the, moving the slider produces a force on the left end. And so the, left, the yellow arrow has to match the red arrow. 
R, uh, you can do that also here by exerting a force with your right arm. So the right arm pushed to the left, the force is transmitted to the left robot, the left arm, and so produces these forces. And again, you have the yellow arrow as to match the red arrow. There are four possi three possible forces, four, six, and eight Newton. And when we do that in the slider condition, so in this first condition, so this is the force error. So that's the difference between the uh, red arrow and the yellow arrow. And you see that for a group of young people, and a group of old people, they're doing quite well. They're not pushing enough. So there's a negative force error. But if you look in the, uh, slide, the mirror condition where they exert the, the force on themselves, then you see that for the uh, younger people, the force error is still slightly negative, but less than in the slider condition. For the older people, there is definitely more overcompensation. Yet we do not think that this is li uh, linked to somatosensory function because the slider condition, which is a measure of somatosensory function, is not worse in older people. And we also tested the position matching tasks for people in these old people and they were also doing fine. And so basically we have here two experiments where, uh, uh, and this reproduced similar results from Walby. But we have so here two uh, experiments where basically we found larger sensory attenuation or larger implicit adaptation, which are two uh, proxies for internal model function in older adults. But this seems to be completely uncoupled from any possible deficit in somatosensory activity. So we're left with this question. This is why, why I chose this interactive talk. Why is there um, a difference or what could explain the, this, this larger uh, internal model function in older adults if it's not somatosensory function? Thanks for your attention. Um, thank you very much, uh, Jay. Um, yeah, so if you have questions, put them in the Q&A uh, window. And please also indicate if you want to come on stage to ask them. Um, maybe to get the, the discussion started, um, can you comment a bit on, um, well, what your ideas are, what could explain this, this uh, difference? Yeah, so I mean, that, that, that <laughs> remains a, a big question, uh, something that we want to investigate because at this moment we really don't understand why it is. I mean, we've tested different things, but so far we've been unsuccessful. So, I mean, there are two possibilities. Either somatosensory function has nothing to do, and then we need to rethink of our, the way we, we think about motor control, or our measures of uh, somatosensation are not good measures because those are actually conscious measure of uh, somatosensation. So people have to report things. And that might not be what the, the brain is actually doing. I mean, we know that sometimes feel, things that you perceive consciously are different than what the motor system uses. Uh, an example of that is the size weight illusion where uh, people are still uh, prone to the size weight illusion why the motor system can actually lift object with the right amount of weight. Yeah, okay, so Katinka, you wanted to, you're muted. Yes, thank you, Jacques. It's interesting work. Um, I would like to ask a psychologist question. And is there any chance that this could be related to an experimenter effect where the elderly um, place more confidence in the authority of the scientist and assume more that any feedback they get from this person is correct in contrast to students? Um, yeah, well, the, the, the thing is that people are completely unaware, I mean, the, the manipulation in the, in the sensory attenuation or, or the, 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 the adaptation, people are completely unaware of what they are doing. They are unaware that they're pushing more or they are unaware that their hand is even drifting. They just think that they, they're bringing their hand in front of them. So I, I, I don't think that this is really, that could be explained by a conscious, you know, by the fact that people, all the people would listen differently or apply the instructions differently. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see how, how, how that would work in this context. Thanks. So we have another question by, uh, oh, Gwendolyn, yeah, um, just go ahead. Um, you're still muted, Gwendolyn, you have to unmute your mic, please. 
I, I didn't. I have no C. So, uh, did you do any correlational analysis? And that's one question. The second is, uh, when you we did, we did, we did all kinds of uh, uh, semantic sensory uh, measures, and uh, I think the last one, the force matching, you see some differences. But that one is the most complicated one. How are you going to interpret that difference? That's just my, my thought. The other thing is, uh, I know you observe the um, observe more implicit learning from the air clamp um, in, in the elderly. Um, is it possible that their strategic learning is less? Were you interpret in that way? Yeah, so, um... So yeah, the, so the last question, uh, I, I don't think that in the task relevant time feedback, we, there is any strategy. I think people are asked to basically apply, the only strategy that they have to apply is to bring the hand, their invisible hand on the target. So that's, I don't think there is a difference in strategy there, uh, or nothing that we have observed. Um, so the, your first question was, what was the type of analysis you uh, asked about? Did you, did you do any uh, correlation analysis? Because you can- Yeah, yeah, okay. so, so we, did, we did plenty of correlation analysis. And, and I mean, those are significant group. I mean, it's 35, 40 people per group, so it's reasonable groups. It's not enough to um, detect very small correlations, but, but we didn't really find any strong correlation. Nothing that would be big enough to actually explain the difference we see. Um, mm -hmm. And your last question, what was it? Was your second question, what was it about? Is how you're going to interpret the force matching data because you see the group differences. Yeah, so the, the so, so yeah, the force matching data, it, it's, it's um, well, I mean, the, the way we interpret it, I, I don't really know. I mean, we thought that it might be, I mean, that's what also Wolpe suggested that this was linked to a worse some other sensory function in other adults, but that's not really what we find. So in the slider condition, at least in the group that I showed you, the older people were even better than the younger people in the slider condition, which is the condition that where, you know, you that is the best proxy in that task of some other sensory function. So it's difficult to really put for, for uh, or this argument that older people would be worse, you know, and but at the same time, uh, that's that's they, they they have this this larger sensory attenuation. So I, we don't really see uh, any strong decline, age related decline in somatosensory sensory function in the older people that we are able to bring in the lab. That doesn't mean that there is none. Uh, but even though they don't have any somatosensory impairment, they they have this sensory attenuation. So it might be that there's no link there. But yeah, that's really that remains a big question. Yeah, maybe the last reason is because the, the sensory integration is different. They give a different weightings to perception and the vision. Yes, right? but 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 it is. Yeah, but the, in in theory, if you give a different weight, it's because the reliability of these signals are different, uh, and so that's what Wolpe uh, proposed is that if you have a worse somatosensory function, you will give a lower weight to proprioception, and that's what will yield larger sensory attenuation. So if you want to give different weight, you need to have a, a less reliable source of information. At least that's how they interpreted it. And, and, and we, that's not what we found. We also have another question from the audience um, yeah. with a quick answer. So uh, Aaron Wong says, well, we know there are differences between static and dynamic proprioception. Have you looked at both? Yes. So the, 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 um, so the unlocalization uh, task is, is the position matching task is more static one, but the other one with the, the reaching direction is more dynamic one. Uh, and, and, and even there we didn't find uh, any different. I mean, that's the one where we thought we would find something because it's very close to actually what people uh, experienced during the task and feedback task. Um, but even there we didn't find uh, any differences. So. Yeah, I mean, that's the, I mean, of, of course, I mean, you can think of many, many different types of, of somatosensory function. I think the one we pick we thought was the one that had the highest chance of uh, yielding a uh, 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 good result, and, and it's not the case. So, yes, I mean, we can test more. We haven't tested all possible somatosensory tasks, uh, but I think we, that was, if it doesn't work with that one, I, I don't really see which task would work. So yes, we had one static and yeah. one more dynamic active movement, which we thought was okay, very great. similar. Um, 
thank you. so we,